We made it. We're in Venice. I can't believe that we're here doing this. I saw it on TikTok. Okay, I admit. Look how beautiful this area is. All right, I'm really sad. You can't buy a storyline like that. Jiminy Christmas. I'm just blown away so far. It has been a long time since Brian and I have gone off of the train station and immediately a city has completely like taken our breath away. So this is one of them. Typically like on these travel days we'll, we'll be lazy and kind of lay around and recoup because travel days are typically stressful. Now we want to literally just go out and explore because we've only got the rest of tonight and tomorrow to see Venice. Venice is actually a bit of an interesting one because I, I, partly, I mean, obviously due to the size, due to the limitations of travel around here, it's not like going to Berlin or something where there's this giant list of like must-see historical sites and landmarks. I know that there are several around the city, but basically our plan here, especially for today, is just to kind of walk around and see what we find. The receptionist at the uh, place where we're staying he even advised, you know, good thing to do is just go get lost in Venice. And it's very easy to do because so much of it obviously looks very similar. It's canals, bridges, and there you go. We're just here to, to take it all in really. feel like we have Venice to ourselves. I know, it's very uh, quiet and slow out today. So. Not that I can compare it to another day in Venice, but... <laughs> So as the sun began to set in Venice, our first stop was a cafe, and then it was back out to explore the city at night. And our exploration started off, well, like this. I literally, like as dumb as this could sound, first of all, Google Maps is leaning us this way. I literally almost walked into the water. Jiminy Christmas. That's where me, as a responsible fiance, stepped in and warned her that she was about to walk in some water. But the the cameraman in me was like so tempted. I'm like, oh, this would be great for the vlog. Just let her walk in, and then I can like run over and it'd be like, oh my gosh, like this big. You know, that would have been in the trailer. Her just falling in the right. Like your passport would have been at the bottom of the canal. That would have been hilarious, right? Well, yeah. Yeah, but then we, but then it would have been a whole thing about a whole new like chapter of this vlog. It's like our passport sunk to the bottom of the Venice Canal, and, and what are we gonna do? And then you know it would have been like Lauren gets weird infection from in from swallowing canal water. Right, you just you can't buy a storyline like that. But none of that'll happen now because I told her to to stop. Okay, now help me figure out where we're going. Okay.
And after popping into a few more shops, we saw a couple of people entering this church here and decided to follow. And I don't think we were really prepared for what we found inside. So that was definitely something that we were not expecting to see. We just kind of stumbled upon that church and... We saw a, a group of three looking to see if it was open. So we just followed right behind them and then there were some other people looking at it. And it was, I mean, it's one of those things where you walk in and you're like, we've seen a lot of churches. Like this will just look like another church. And you get in there and one, just like the scale of it. Yeah. Um, it's hard to show on video, but yeah, it's just big, spacious. Um, it's very unique the way that it was set up. We had not seen another church like that. Really cool. Very, very cool. Yeah. Now we're going to head uh, to a bar to get a glass of wine or something near the hotel to finish off our night. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this was only half a day. Exciting. Right. Good morning, everybody. It is the start of our only full day here in Venice. And where are we headed? We are heading to this pasta place and it is like a takeaway pasta restaurant. It's about 25 minutes walk away from the hotel. And I saw it on TikTok, okay, I admit. But it looks like a really good place, lots of good reviews and we're hungry. But for something like a little lighter, like a little takeaway pasta situation. Yeah, it's always good to have something in the stomach because obviously, well, any place that we go, but especially a place like Venice where it's going to be exclusively walking everywhere. So might as well get something then. Yeah, uh, might as well get something in the tummy, uh, get some energy fueled up, ready for a day of exploring. So yesterday we went over a ton of bridges because there's a bridge literally like every, I don't know, a couple hundred feet, right? Uh, so for fun, we're going to see how many bridges we walk over in one day and this is our first. This was really such a fun, unique way to explore a city, just weaving in and out of the different alleyways pretty aimlessly, just kind of seeing what you saw. It was, it was so fun, it was so unique. We hadn't done anything like it. We, like I said earlier, didn't really have much on the agenda, didn't really use Google Maps too much. It was just heading in a direction and figuring out how you got there and seeing beautiful sights like this, which by the way, is bridge number. Seems like we stumbled into a little market area. Yeah, 
A few moments later. Scratch that. It wasn't really a market area. It was just kind of a standard shopping area with a bunch of the same generic, uh, you know, tourist souvenirs stalls. Yeah, souvenirs with overpriced merch. And it's also hold on the lighting. There we go. It's also way busier today, which is a nice change because yesterday was like really super quiet. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. This is bridge number five. Almost to the Boston place. I think we're just like 30 seconds away. He's embarrassed. Let's see the reaction now. Is it good? That's really good. That's like so much more flavor than like a lot of the pasta that we've had recently. It's got like a um, little kick to it. They ask if you want spicy, a little spicy. So I want a little kick, but not too much. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the noodles are really good too. I mean, it's bizarre how thick they are. But yeah, all of it's really good for just what, 7 euros 50. Not bad. So as you'll see here, this basilica, very different to the church that we saw the previous evening. A, a lot of gold, different colors, um, you know, murals and sculptures. So much more detail, but it seemed like it was packed into a much smaller space. It was very nice, honestly, to, I mean, considering that we had just visited a church one night prior, maybe like 14, 15 hours before this, to not have them feel similar in any way was very, very refreshing. We never felt like we were getting the same exact experience twice while we were in Venice. So that was the Basilica di San Marco and it was pretty cool. It was only six euros for both of us to go through, which I mean, compared to a lot of other things we paid to go through, that feels like a steal. And it was worth it too, you know, it wasn't just a, you know, it wasn't just like a, a little nothing church. Yeah, it was really nice. Yeah. So if you're in Venice, yeah, you could just pop in. It's not going to break the bank. And pretty short worth and sweet. Yeah. Yeah. And the square is nice too. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's yeah. under construction like right now, but it is nice. And speaking of things in Venice to do, we're gonna go over our seventh bridge right now. Bridge 
is in like an hour and 15 minutes, by the way. I said this to Lauren yesterday, but Venice would be like the perfect place to just play like paintball or something or just tag, <laughs> you know, just have it all to yourself and run around just all the little narrow alleyways and over the bridges and stuff. Like it's the perfect little like, you know, hide and go seek. Little city. Of city. Yeah. yeah. And by the way, we are about to go over bridge number nine. Alright, so we are at a really interesting and cool bookstore. From what it says online, you, there's like a really interesting book display. So we're gonna go in and see and then shop around maybe. So as unique as this little bookshop was, the reason we came here was for this display, sort of these stairs made from a bunch of books. It wasn't quite what we were expecting to find, but honestly, this view here completely made up for it. Didn't know you can like actually climb on. Okay, so that was uh, really, really underwhelming. That's one of those things where, you know, if you see something on TikTok, it's gonna be hit or miss. Very, very hit or miss. We've done a lot of like, you know, you look for interesting things and sometimes TikTok brings you just a little thing you can pop over and do. But um, whether or not that's actually gonna be worth it, like that would have been cool if they had that display maybe in the corner of the bookstore, like inside where those books can stay dry. But you walk out and it's very clear, like the rain has just got to the entire display. So you've just got these moldy, like crumbling books. And I don't know, I didn't want to sit down and take a picture. It was just like walking on them. I wasn't even sure what the stability was going to be like. Yeah, um, it's a little sketchy. Um, it's a great idea, but yeah, just not executed very. Right. Yeah. yeah, but so again, it's just one of those things you don't know until you go. Uh, but just be careful, you know, if you're watching things on TikTok, you might not necessarily see the. Uh... Wait, I have to interject. Okay. I have to say, obviously, I'm the one finding these things on TikTok. It's a gamble. But, uh, and I'm not trying to justify it, I completely agree with Brian. The but, pasta was TikTok. Yeah, I was just gonna say, the pasta was something that we saw on TikTok, and it was phenomenal. Right. Uh, and then you have a different experience, so right. obviously it's not like TikTok is no, yeah. the best way, but it's how we find like unique ideas that like TripAdvisor doesn't have. So. Right. But yeah, it's, but it just, yeah, just it's just that little note that, um, you know, we're in this sort of culture now where you get a lot of these just like snippets, these... 20 to 30 seconds of like, you know, oh, I, I like just someone on a mountaintop or something and you don't really see the reality of like, <laughs> yeah. and, you know, so we just kind of want to show the full picture and just share our experience. Just, you know, people can okay. glamorize anything. A lot of travel influencers will sort of glamorize all aspects of, of what they're seeing and stuff, which is cool and it gets people out traveling, but it's not always going to be like and I would say go to it for the bookshop. It's a really cool bookshop. Yeah. Not the display in the back. Right. And while we have you here, uh, we're approaching, what is this, 11? Bridge number. Yeah, I think it's 11, right? We'll put the correct answer right here. Back to the same place 
going somewhere else. Uh, that TikTok told us to go to. So we'll see if it's a hit or miss. All right, I'm really sad, uh, but we were gonna go here, Cafe Florian. I guess it's the oldest coffee house in all of Italy. Uh, looks like it's closed and under construction. We definitely wanna do a few more things today on our list, but that's a shame. I think there's definitely a pattern that we're noticing. It seems to be that all of these cities are doing the bulk of their construction in the midwinter months you know, obviously to prepare for tourism, picking up in spring and summer when they're at their busiest. So they're not necessarily going to look their best in December, January. It's unfortunate that's just the timing of when we were able to do this trip. It's not like we missed out on doing too much with construction, but you know, certain things are closed. Um, for example, I think, I think going up that, I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's closed in January. Um, you know, the, even just the Reichstag building in Berlin, if you saw that video, just heavy construction in the front of it so we didn't get to get like a nice straight on view. So if you're gonna be doing a trip like this, just be prepared for the winter months to, you know, have some heavy construction going on. You might have to navigate around. Uh, certain things might not be available for you to do. On the plus side though, just look at this, Look at the sky. Coming off of rainy gray Milan and I think, well no, yeah, Bern had some nice weather. I don't know, it seems like every other place we go to the weather's nice. So we have to endure a little bit of rain, a little bit of cloudy gray drab city. And then we go to a place like this. This is just gorgeous. It's deceptively cold. It is chilly. Yeah. But my God, this is Not like- a single cloud. Look how, like, look how beautiful this area is. Walk into the water. I'm just like having one of those moments where I can't believe that we're here doing this. And I'm just, I mean, I had, I think on top of when we were up, up on Girton, I had a similar sort of moment. Uh, that I, I think I talked to you guys about as well. I'm just thinking about like how far we've come, everything that we've done in two and a half months. It's just, it's always when you're in these like beautiful places, nice sunshine, it starts to sink in and you realize like... We're so, in Venice, Italy? Yeah. I'm just so glad we did this. And I have to add on to that too that earlier today uh, I felt like a lot of sadness rush in really quick because I had realized like our lives pretty soon is not gonna be this anymore um, 
we're excited for what's coming next, this new chapter of us, you know, moving to Colorado and all of that stuff. But um, this trip is coming to an end and it is really, really sad, you know? Yeah, we're definitely, I think, gonna get restless pretty quickly. And, you know, just so you guys, oh, hold on, I think my, I think we're still going. Um, sorry about that. Anyway, so just so you guys are aware as well, you know, we have other trips that we're planning. Once this trip is over, this by no means is like, okay, we did the one trip that this channel is gonna do. Yeah, QLC Travels isn't ending after this three month adventure. Yeah, if anything like this has sort of unlocked all of the potential that's available. You know, we realize that travel is not some big intimidating thing. It's not overly complicated. I mean, we've made mistakes along the way, but we've we, learned a lot. Bridge 15. Oh, bridge 15. We're I'll currently- I'll get video, you keep talking. Okay currently crossing bridge 15 um, but yeah once this trip is over we're gonna get back and obviously we're just gonna have a little bit of settling down uh, saving up but long story short once this trip is over it's on to planning more here is bridge number 16 and now 17 We interrupt this bridge counting segment to give you this view. Okay, so it is now the next morning. We're at the train station. We're about to leave Venice. The last bridge count, I believe, is 28. We crossed five more last night. We went to a cafe, we went out to dinner. So I believe our total bridge count should be 33 bridges yesterday. I feel like we probably crossed the same amount the first day. Yeah. So we definitely crossed at least 60 bridges in our day and a half here in Venice. Yeah, and we've got, let's see, about an hour until our train leaves for us to go to Florence. So we will see you in Florence. This is Florence. It's gotta be like top five most impressive cathedral. He is so much bigger than either of us thought. 